In the year of our Lord 1692, in the heart of Salem, a darkness had taken root. A malevolence that whispered through the streets, seeping into the very soil upon which we trod. As an investigator dispatched from Boston, skepticism was my creed. A beacon of reason in a world succumbing to shadow. Yet, what I encountered in Salem defied the laws of man and nature. A horror that words can scarce describe. The witch trials had cast a pall over the town, a spectacle of fear and fire that claimed lives as easily as the autumn reaper claims the wheat. But amidst the cries of the condemned and the fervor of the righteous, children continued to vanish, plucked from their beds by unseen hands. The townsfolk spoke of a witch a specter cloaked in darkness, her eyes aglow with hellfire, her voice a symphony of despair. They said she was the cause, the architect of their suffering. Driven by a need to uncover the truth, I sought the counsel of an old librarian, Mr. Hawthorne, a keeper of forbidden knowledge. He presented me with a tome, ancient and bound in skin that was not animal. Its pages filled with spells of protection and banishment. Knowledge is your weapon, he intoned, his eyes gleaming with an intensity that I found unsettling. Each account was eerily consistent. A chorus of terror that painted a portrait of the witch in vivid hues of nightmare. She was described as tall, her form shrouded in a cloak of raven feathers that seemed to drink in the light. Her hair was a tangle of shadows, her, her fingers long and tipped with claws sharp as the winter's chill. They spoke of her voice, a thing of beauty and terror, capable of luring the most steadfast soul to madness. Armed with this arcane knowledge, I ventured into the woods on the outskirts of Salem, the witch's supposed domain. The forest was a labyrinth of shadows, ancient trees watching like silent sentinels as I made my way deeper into its heart. It was there, in a clearing bathed in moonlight, that I found her. The witch was as the townsfolk had described, yet more terrifying in her presence. Her eyes were bottomless pits, windows to a soul as dark as the abyss. She moved with a grace that belied her sinister nature, circling me like a predator stalking its prey. I reached for the words of the spell, but they caught in my throat, my voice a mere whisper against her power. It was then that she spoke, her voice a caress that chilled my blood. You seek to understand to uncover the truth, she said, her lips curling into a semblance of a smile. But some truths are better left buried. Her voice seemed all too familiar. Before I could react, she struck her movements a blur of speed and malice. Pain flared through my body as her claws raked across my chest. And darkness claimed me. I awoke to find myself imprisoned. Shackled within a cell of roots and stone deep within the lair. 
The air was thick with the scent of decay. The only light provided by the glow of her eyes as she watched me from the shadows. As she approached closer and closer. With a flick of her wrist, the cloak fell away and the witch's true identity was revealed. Mr. Hawthorne, the librarian, stood before me. His attire, a, a costume of deception. My shock was palpable, a cold realization washing over me as the pieces fell into place. The book, the map, the tales of witchcraft, all were fabrications, a labyrinth designed to lure me and my investigation forever deep into the woods to meet the same fate as the children. I pen this note with a shard of wood in the dim light that filters through the cracks in the walls my hope as thin as the paper upon which I write. Some of the missing children are still here. For now, Mr. Hawthorne believes he has outwitted the madness that consumes Salem by weaponizing their fear. But in truth, he was its embodiment. A mere man far more evil than any legendary demon.